Today we will be making the Harper Carry All Tote. I have the materials and concepts you should know listed on the screen here. Please note that the written pattern is available for purchase on my website. The link is in the description box. So let's get started. So today's tutorial is the second in our summer crochet series and this series focuses on patterns that you can make during the warm weather. Um, I know a lot of folks think that once summer comes around crocheting ends and that is not the case. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Uh, once again we'll be working with the 3mm braided cotton cord by the brand Bobany and I'm using the color avocado. You'll need about four uh, bundles of this cord. You're only going to use 325 uh, meters, um, so you'll have about 75 meters left over from your fourth bundle. But that's okay because you can use that to make a wristlet or some type of uh, inner pouch to go inside of your bag. Uh, we'll also be using our six millimeter crochet hook, and of course you'll need a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and a stitch marker. So first we will begin working on our base. Uh, here I'm making a slip knot and then I'm going to chain 14. My desired measurements for the base of the bag are about six inches by 18 and three quarter inches. So if you want your base of your bag to be smaller or bigger, just adjust your starting chain count accordingly so that you get the desired size. Now that your starting chain is complete, we're going to begin working and we're going to start crocheting in that second chain from our hook. I'm going to work in the back bump, but you're more, more than welcome to work through the stitch as well, but I prefer to work through that back bump because it creates a nice clean edge. So you will single crochet across your chain so you get to the end and once you reach the end you should have a total of 13 stitches. the end of our first row we have a total of 13 stitches and now you will chain one and turn so we will continue working back and forth uh, just single crocheting across each row for a total of 32 rows and once again if you'd like your base to be bigger or smaller just adjust the number of rows that you have in this portion to your desired size so I'm going to work on this part and then come back once I've completed row 32. Here is our completed square after crocheting 32 rows and then ending off with the chain one there. We will now work 94 single crochet stitches around the perimeter of our square and this will be the first round of our body. Rounds one and two of the body will be referred to as the setup rounds. So what we'll do is we'll work three single crochet stitches in each corner and then at the sides or tops of each row that we created we'll work one single crochet stitch. In the written pattern, I have a image with the placement of the stitches available to make it a little easier, um, but I'll also walk it through in this video here just to show you where to place each stitch. So as you work around, um, you may find that once you've created your three stitches in the corners that it kind of covers the first stitch of that next side you're able to either skip that stitch or instead of working three stitches in the side, work two in that corner and then work that, that third stitch as the first stitch of the next side. So I know it sounds a little bit convoluted, 
but um, I will walk you through it so that you see exactly what I'm doing. So we're starting off by placing two single crochet stitches in the corner here and then we're going to work 30 single crochet stitches across the top of the square until we get to our corner. I'm going to fast forward through this part and come back once I get to the corner. corner here and so I'm going to place two single crochet stitches there and then work that third single crochet as the first stitch of the shorter side. Um, like I said before you can work your three single crochet stitches directly in the corner or space them as I did just now but just want to make sure that in the general vicinity of each corner that you are working three stitches um, because those will be important for round two. What I'm pointing out here on this side is that because the uh, row here is very tight, because that's where we started off, um, that's where our slip knot is, I went on ahead and put all three stitches in that corner and then I'm going to skip over that row and just go to the next one because it's a very tight squeeze. So depending on how tight your tension is, you may have to do this for any of the corners. Um, but just want to show you different ways of positioning the stitches so that um, you're not concerned if you're doing it the wrong way. There's, there's multiple ways to get to the angle here. And for those wondering what my stitch counts are for each side, for the two longer sides, I have evenly spaced 30 stitches. For the two shorter sides, I have evenly spaced 11 stitches. And then for each corner, there are three stitches. So if you get those, you'll end with exactly 94 stitches and your base will end up looking like mine. So I'm going to continue working to the end of this last side here and then I'll show you how to finish off round one. So after completing this stitch we have one more stitch to go and you will place it in the corner there and now we will end with a slip stitch. So you can either slip stitch into that beginning chain. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet that we made for round one. Here's what our base is looking like so far. And now we will begin round two. So you'll first start off with a chain four. And this chain four counts as a double crochet in chain one. And then you will make a double crochet in the same stitch as your beginning chain four. We will be placing one of these increases in each of the corners. And we will only do that for round two. So to continue on, you will chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet into the next stitch. And we'll repeat this across this long side for a total of 17 times. Once you've completed the 17th repeat, you will chain one and double crochet into the last stitch worked, and that will create your increase in the corner. So I'm going to speed past this part and then I'll come back once we get to the corner and show you exactly what I mean. So we have arrived 
5 to repeat 17 and as you notice it's just to the left of the corner but that's okay um, it will not be noticeable in future rounds so you chain one double crochet chain one again and then we're going to double crochet into the stitch that we just worked and that creates our increase in the corner and then you'll continue on with your chain one skip one double crochet along this shorter side again creating an increase once you get to the corner for the shorter sides you will repeat the chain one skip one double crochet for a total of seven times <music> again we've reached our corner and you're going to complete the seventh repeat of the chain one skip one double crochet and then once you've done that to make our increase you'll chain one and double crochet into that same stitch and now we'll continue our repeats down the other side so it's very repetitive this process um, for this side I'll note that you will repeat the chain one skip one double crochet portion for a total of 16 times and then for this shorter side you'll repeat it for a total of six times once you get to the end of that round you should have one stitch remaining and what we're going to do is close off our round with a slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four from the beginning of our round what a mouthful so make sure you chain one we're going to skip that final stitch and now you're going to search for the third chain in our chain four here. So here's our chain four. And remember, the first three chains represent our first double crochet stitch, and the fourth one is a chain one. So we are going to slip stitch into our double crochet stitch. So you will take your hook and insert it into the third chain and slip stitch. And then you have completed round two. So from this point, you are on cruise control. So rounds three and four are going to be repeated until you reach the height of the bag that you want. So for round three, we are simply single crocheting into every stitch in the round. So you'll start off with a chain two, and then you're going to crochet into every chain one space and into the tops of every double crochet stitch and you'll repeat this around to the end so i'm going to speed through this part and then show you round four <music> Once you get to the end of round three, you'll simply join to the chain two from the beginning of the round to close off the round. And so round four is going to be similar to your round two. So it's going to have that same pattern. Uh, keep in mind that we will not be placing any increases in the corners. So you'll just be working that pattern pretty much keeping it in alignment with its partner on the previous rounds. So that'll be a nice helpful guide for you. So we first start off round four with a chain four. And remember this counts as our first double crochet stitch in chain one. You'll skip the next stitch and then crochet into the next stitch. And you'll repeat this, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch all the way around. So I will work through this part and then come back at the very end of the round to show you how to finish off the round. 
showing you how the corners are worked just like the rest of the row please do not put any increases in the corners for this round or any future rounds <laughs> now come to the end of this round you should have one stitch remaining and then here is uh, where we will join the round so you will chain one and then join it to the third chain of the chain four from the beginning and that will finish off your round four and so from here you will continue to repeat rounds three and four for a total of ten times um, and then you will finish off with one additional repeat of round three, which are those single crochet stitches. So again, repeat rounds three and four for a total of 10 times, and then finish off with one more row of round three, which are single crochet stitches, and then we will begin the handles. And so here I'm just wrapping up uh, the at last repeat of round three. Now, if you want your bag to be a little taller, just add a few more repeats in there, but make sure that once you've completed your desired number of repeats, that you make sure to complete one more round of round three, the single crochet stitches, and then begin your handles. So if you're following along with me exactly, you should now be on round 26. And you start off by making a chain two, and then single crocheting into the first 12 stitches of that round. Once you complete the first 12 stitches, you will now make a chain for your handle. So I will chain 50, but you are welcome to adjust this to make a shorter strap or a longer strap. Just keep in mind that after use, the strap will stretch just a little bit. So keep that in mind when you are considering your final strap length. you've completed the chain for your handles you'll skip 13 stitches and then you'll reattach the end of your handle with a single crochet to the left of those skip stitches
So now we'll continue on and make 36 more single crochet stitches until we reach the other side of our bag and that will give you a total of 37 single crochet stitches in between each handle. So I'm going to speed through this part and then come back once we get to the other side. Actually, at the end of the 37 single crochet stitches but I'm also at the end of my third bundle of cord so I will show you how I attach the next bundle of cord once you get to this part um, and then continue on and finish the round so here is our bundle of cord and what you want to look for is the end that has the little knot in it and you don't have to remove the ball band Actually, it's recommended that you keep it on. It keeps uh, it from falling apart and getting tangled. Simply remove the knot and begin to pull the strand and it will come out smoothly. And as you work with it and it loosens up a bit, it'll come, it'll pull from the bundle a lot easier. So I'm just making a few chains here. Then I'm going to take the live ends of my cord and line them up together. And then taking the cord from the bundle and using that as my new working cord, I will begin to well, continue to make the chain with that newly attached cord. Once you've completed your chains, um, I am actually going back to just tie a knot in the end where I join the new bundle of cord just to secure it in place. Once I complete the final round, I will actually crochet over those ends so they'll be nice and tucked away neatly and out of sight. So making sure that before you attach your chain, you make sure it's not tangled or twisted. Count out your 13 stitches to skip and then attach your chain to the side of the bag with a single crochet stitch. And then from here, you will just finish it off by single crocheting to the end of the round. And so I'm going to work through this part and then come back and show you how I finish off this round. Once you get to the end of this round, you'll join it with a slip stitch to the chain two from the beginning. And now we just have one more round to complete. And so for your final round, you will just single crochet in each stitch and chain around. To start off, make a chain two and then begin to single crochet in each stitch or chain around and then you're done. So I'm going to speed through this process and then come back at the very end to show you how I finish off the bag.
have finally reached the end of this tutorial. So you'll clip your cord and then finish off with your preferred closure method. My favorite closure method is the invisible join. And I love it because it creates a closure that looks exactly like the tops of the other stitches and makes it hard for anyone to see where your work begins or ends. So I'm doing the invisible closure here and then I will weave my end securely and trim any excess cord. And so this is what it looks like after I've weaved my ends and trimmed the excess cord. And just like that, our bag is complete. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can try to see the full bag and frame. And as you can see, it worked up really nicely. I love the texture and it's just a nice size bag. So if you are looking for something fun and easy to make for days at the beach, going to the farmer's market, grocery store, or just a bag to carry all your odds and ends when you're running errands, this is a perfect project. And as a quick reminder, the written pattern is available for purchase on my website. The link is in the description box of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you want to see more summer crochet patterns, definitely subscribe, turn on your notification bells, give this video a thumbs up, and comment down below to let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful week. Bye.